few years back and I didn't really know them, but of course I knew Barnett's name because he's a world famous player and he was a contributor, a regular contributor to our local Sunshine Bridge News, which goes out to all members of our district, District 9, I believe. And so there he was, this real life champion and author in our midst. And then along came his beautiful wife, Maggie. And Maggie and I not only became bridge partners playing the weak no trump system, um, we became friends. And Barnett was the person who helped me personally get involved with teaching on BBO. So any of you who came to any of my BBO lessons, um, thank Barnett for getting me started with that more than a year ago under COVID. So uh, if you're not really that familiar with Barnett, especially if you're from out of state, you may not know that Barnett has won many, many international competitions and trophies. And he's written a book called Playing with the Legends. Um, he's been a bridge player since um, his youth, really, before he was 20, winning major tournaments in the UK. And he has played with many, many famous bridge players, including the one person that I'm sure every woman a lady who's here today will know, and that, of course, was Omar Sharif, who became a good friend of Maggie and, Jamie, and uh, Barnett. Um, Maggie has won many cups and titles in her own right. She has a star um, on her name in, on BBO, and I feel very privileged to on a regular basis. All right, I, I muted. I even played with Barnett one time when Maggie was in Scotland. Barnett together, and I'm happy and proud to say that we know. Um, Down low. I will never be the caliber of player that Maggie and Barnett are, and um, but I'm hoping to learn a little bit more about the nuances of the weak no trump system today. So, without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to the champions in our midst, Maggie and Barnett Schenken. Thank you very much, Rosemary. A very nice introduction. Thank you. Rosemary's been a great friend of ours since we arrived at Fort Lauderdale. And she's taken the hand at Fort Lauderdale Bridge Corp now and uh, leading them in great directions. So today, we're going to look at the week no trump. When I was in Scotland, I played the week no trump for 30 years. And uh, then I came to USA, but people in the USA didn't play the week no trump. So I just got used to playing with partners and I, I played strong no trump. So when I play with Maggie, I play weak no trump. And when I play with US partners, I usually play strong no trump. There are a few people that play weak no trump now in, in the States as they see some of the advantages of it. It's up to you to decide whether you think it might be better or not. I'm going to, before I start showing you a few hands, I'm going to give you some of the advantages of playing a week no trump. Firstly, a 12 to 14 no trump comes up twice as often as a 15, 17, no trump. Twice as often. And if you play 11 to 14, like Maggie and I play, it actually comes up three times as often. So those of you who like to bid, I can get right into the bidding with one no trump. And that makes it difficult for the opponents because they've lost a whole round of bidding. When you may have opened one club or one diamond playing a strong no trump, already the bidding's at one no trump. And they have to find a way to enter the auction, if they can. So, <clears throat> this can be quite awkward. Now, if you open one of a minor, 
playing strong no trump, your partner is never sure whether you have that minor because some people play two card club suit, some people play three cards of club suit, some people play better minor. So you're never sure with whether you actually have that minor or whether you just have a weak low trump, 12 to 14 high card points and that minor. If you're playing weak low trump, then you know one of two things. When your partner opens one of a minor, your partner either has a long suit in that minor or that partner has enough points at least the values of a strong no trump. So partner has a decent hand and that makes it easier for you to come in and compete in the bidding. Your partner bids one, one of a suit and it goes three of by the opposition, say one diamond, three of a major, and you're looking at your hand. You would know if you are playing weak no trump, the partner either has that suit or has some points. If you're playing strong no trump, I'm sure many of you have had this problem. You've no idea what to do if you have, say, eight or nine I card points, because your partner might have a weak hand or your partner might have a strong hand. So you just don't know what to do. So these are advantages of, of playing the weak no trump. There are some disadvantages. Very occasionally, you might lose a penalty. That's one disadvantage. Another disadvantage might be that the lead sometimes will come round to the weaker hand rather than coming round to the strong no trump hand. So basically, the what playing a strong no trump is safer. You don't necessarily give a, a, a penalty away. So people can feel safe when they're playing a strong no trump. But people in life like to be safe. You like to be safe when you're wearing a mask, for example. The, these are all these are good examples of feeling safe. But when you're playing bridge, you can let your hair down a little bit and play a little looser. You don't need to be 100% safe when you play bridge. You can live life on the wild side and enjoy your bridge game more by making more bids and being perhaps taking some risks. And I, funnily enough, when you're young, you play bridge by taking risks. And as you get older, generally speaking, most players play a bit more safe. But I've found that the winning action in bridge is to reduce that level of safeness and take risks. So regardless of whether it's a weak no, no trump or anything in bridge, my advice to everybody watching here would be to enter the auction, get into the auction as soon as you can. Take a chance now and then. You don't need to do anything ridiculous, but come into the auction perhaps when previously you wouldn't come into the auction. You'll find yourself, you're enjoying your bridge more. You're, you're getting in there. You're going to get better results. And so my advice to everybody here is to maybe play bridge a little less safely than you play now. And now we're going to start with some hands from the, showing you the weak no trump. And after every hand, we'll stop and take any questions. So here we go. I mean, I have to undo that because I'm playing here. Okay.
So I've got a nice week, no Trump. I've got 13 white card points. I've got five card suit. I've got enough to go to game. We're playing 11 to 14. So I bet three, no Trump. So the contract is three no trump, one no trump, two clubs, two diamonds, two no trump, three no trump, and you'll see that the normal lead is the ten of would be the ten of hearts. And now we have two heart tricks, five club tricks, seven, a spade, and a diamond. We have nine tricks. So we're going to make three no trump. Now, nice result. Now before I take any questions. Let's see what would happen if you were playing strong no trump. And lo and behold, we have the same hand. So, so here you see that it's going to be three no Trump, but it doesn't matter whether South declared the hand or not, or North declared the hand, the opening lead was going to be a spade. So here, a spade is led, and the clearer can't make any heart tricks. All the clearer has got is seven top tricks, and the contract is going to go one down. So, in actual fact, you saw the bidding one no trump, two clubs, but it may have gone one no trump, three no trump. That would be another normal way to bid it. And if the bidding goes one no trump, three no trump, West has a blind lead. Well, we saw that playing weak no trump, one no trump, three no trump. Why a heart was led and we made the contract. And here, when you're playing strong no trump, it doesn't matter whether West leads or East leads, a spade lead defeats the contract and it goes one down. So this hand, shows an advantage in playing the weak no trump. You've made your game call once and you've gone down playing strong no trump. Now, if anybody would like to ask a question on any of the first two hands, they're very welcome to do so. Or on any of anything that I've said so far, they can ask a question. I have two questions. Yes. Does Stamen and Jacoby transfers still work with this week? No, Trump. Yes. Well, this, you can. You, what you what you do is you can just play your same system that you that you play, but you need different point values to respond. So you play, can play Stamen and make an invitational bid, 
but you'll have an invitational bid with a, a very good 11 or 12 iCard point. Mm. But uh, uh, so an invitational bid to three no Trump with 11 or 12. And if you would want to make an invitational to six no Trump, now you'll need to have something like a good 18 points, a good high 18 high card points to make an invitational mm. bid to six no Trump. So, Why did she bid Stamen without four of a major? Well, she bid Stamen without four of a major because one no Trump, two no Trump, we play four suit transfers. So the, the hand had to be valued either as a race to three no Trump, or if, if you're bidding two no Trump, then it had to go through two clubs. I'm not sure how you play at your invitational bids to two no Trump. Some people play one no Trump, two no Trump is natural. And other people play one no Trump, two clubs, two something, two no Trump, as there is to two no Trump. Okay. Any other questions before we move on to another hand? You can take questions. I said quite a bit at the beginning. I was trying to explain advantages and disadvantages. When she, when you opened one club, why didn't she bid two no Trump in response? Well, she had 12 it, points. it would have been a possibility. That's a good question. It's, uh, it would have been a, not unreasonable to bid two no Trump, but she only had three small hearts. Okay. Um, okay. So, so, I mean, a, a lot of, play, as I say, a lot of players don't worry about that, but perhaps she thought, that it might be better played by my side with the heart stopper. Okay. Imagine I had uh, king, king three hearts and it could have been better to be played by my side. Okay. Any other questions? Anybody else? Time for a question. Uh, why didn't, uh, why wasn't two spades overcalled over the week two, one no Trump? Well, it's, it goes one no trump past two clubs. Well, it's kind of dangerous when the opponent. No, I mean with the, when the opponent. Why didn't they overcall queen of the two spades to get a lead to the spade? Yeah, when it goes one no trump past two clubs, she would have to overcall two spades then. No. <clears throat> no. Okay. Yeah, the, the the first hand the one no trump opening. One no trump was opened and it went past two clubs. And now she would have to call two spades, which is a bit, a little bit dangerous over after the two club okay. bid because the hand's looking for a major. So it's a, you might overcall two spades. Here it would work, certainly, but uh, it could be that you, you may go for a penalty. It's up to you whether you you decide in this hand it would have worked to bid two spades over two clubs. But in other hands, then it might go past past double and now you're playing two spades double. Okay. Okay, we'll go on to the next hand. Now let's look at this hand. The contract's going to be one no Trump and it's going to be passed out. And the defense are going to take four spades and three hearts. And the contract is going to go down one for 50 points to east-west. 
Neither West nor East can enter the bidding easily. West's just got a, a balanced hand, can't really take any action, and East only has a 12 count and can't really make a call either. So the contract would be one no Trump passed out. Let's look at what would happen when you play strong no Trump. So here the contract is four spades, and we see that all we lose is a club of two diamonds. And we make four spades. So the first hand playing weak no trump, you lost 50 points, and here you lose 420 points for, for the opponents reaching four spades. So you see how the, the obstructiveness of the one no trump worked well here. Now, does anyone have any questions on this hand? What does I, East's two diamond bid mean? Ah, uh, East one one diamond double past two diamonds. That's a forcing bid, and it, it, it means it's asking his partner if he has a major suit, and uh, so his partner showed a major suit and now raced the game. Now let's just say you didn't have the King of Hearts. Take the King of Hearts away then you would just raise the three spades with your nine, two aces and nine high card points. Yes. Why couldn't West double the no Trump? Well, her hand. It, because really, he doesn't have what's his partner meant to do if West doubles. West has got 13 bed balanced high card points. It's not, you're meant to, in order to double, you're meant to have like top of the range of the opponent's suit, of the opponent's range. So, it's like with 14 high card points and a 4 3 3, then you would double. Or if you had a good lead, you might double with 13 high card points, like a five card suit, something good. But when you've only, you, you don't have a good lead, your 13 points has got a jack. Jacks don't really count very much. Now, don't, jacks sometimes, although they count one point, the jacks is the worst card in the deck for, for a point. And so not quite enough to double. And then when it comes round to East, it doesn't have enough to touch. He doesn't have enough to double either. So I'm going to suggest a defense to you a, a little bit later over one no Trump. But what, what the object here is to say how difficult it is. You might decide to double with this hand and it would work here. But it wouldn't work if your partner has got maybe three or four high card points and, and, and the opponents are now put some pressure on you and you're going to give away a penalty. So the idea is the one no trumper is making it difficult for the opponents. 
Sometimes the opponents might guess to do the right thing, and sometimes the opponents will guess to do the wrong thing. Often the one no trump opener encourages the opposition to come in with weak hands, weaker than they would normally be, and, and they give away a penalty. Any other question here? Yeah, Barnett, wouldn't yes. Capaletti work on something like this if you and your partner had an agreement that the double would just show the point count of the uh, no trump opener? Well, you can play that. You can, uh, that's one system. I'm going to discuss systems against it later. Uh, that's one system. Uh, there's many different systems you can use. The, the one that uh, if you use one that you you start, the, the, the weaker you are, the weaker you bid, the more dangerous it is. So if you say double shows 12 high card points or 11 high card points, then it's like you're, you're entering like a poker game and uh, you'll give away even more penalties. So the question is, how many points should you have? The traditional defense says you should have near the top of the range of the opponents, not near the bottom of the range. What I'm going to suggest later is that, that you have defenses and two clubs should show both major suits. Two diamonds shows one major suit and two of a major shows that major and one minor. That's the defense I use to the weak no trump. Double is points, good hand. Two clubs is both majors. Two diamonds is one major. And two of a major is that major and a minor. I'll come back to that later on. Thank you. Any other questions? I have a question. Could you use that defense even in a regular no trump? Yes, I, I use it. Well, in a regular no trump. And here is why I use two clubs is for both majors. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of like a modified, I think it's maybe modified Capaletti in that uh, you may, you always bid two clubs with both majors. Why do you bid two clubs with both majors? It's because if you've got five of one and four of another, which you quite often have in the majors, partner can now bid two diamonds, and now you bid your five card major. So it goes one no trump, two clubs, I have both majors. Partner has got three three in the majors, two diamonds, which is your longer major, and you now bid your major suit. One no trump, two diamonds. I just have a one suited major. Partner can now bid two hearts to find out which major it is. So I like to use that defense against both no trumps, but I use something different over a strong no trump and over a weak no trump. Over a weak no trump, I play double means I've got strong hand and I'm in principle, I'm trying to get penalty from the opponents. Because they have dared to use this weak no trump, I'm going to try and penalize them, if possible, by doubling. Against a strong no trump, some people still play double for penalties, but I find the double less useful there. And more, more of the expert players play double to show a four card major and a five card minor. So a strong no trump double would be a four card major, five card minor, and a weak no trump double would be cards. We're trying to get penalties. We're trying to get penalties. So, I mean, and uh, talking about penalties, it goes one no trump double, and then we're going to look at what happens after that in, in, in some other hands that we're going to look at. So I'm going to move on to the next hand.
So here's a problem that East has. You're playing bridge in your local duplicate and you've got this very nice 19 high card points. It's gone one no trump pass. Firstly, you see, if you're playing weak no trump, you know your partner's 12 to 14 high. You've only got two. The axe is going to fall in a second. It's going to go one no trump, pass, pass, double. And now the, the, could, the blood could be rolling out. And now the 911 call might be coming. But for, before you have to make that 911 call, you take a chance. You say to yourself, maybe the opponents haven't got good methods of how to, against the weak no trump. So you take it out. You say, I'm going to bid two clubs. And my idea is if partner bids two diamonds, I'm going to pass. If partner bids two hearts, I'm going to pass. And, and, and hopefully partner will bid two spades. But whatever happens, I'm not going to let the axe fall without me trying to stop the axe falling. So that's why North made, Maggie made a nice bid of two clubs. So now it's come to East. And East got this great hand, but perhaps East hasn't discussed the defense against no trump. Most people only discuss defenses against a strong no trump. And East knows if he doubles two clubs and they haven't discussed their defense, then the double means they want, they've got clubs. They're asking partner to lead a club against no trump. That's the way most people defend. So East has got a problem. And that's why I suggest to you that we can solve that problem by discussing with your partner. If the opponents play weak, no trump, and it goes two clubs, you should double that to show you've got a good hand. It's nothing to do with clubs. So you're just saying you've got a good hand. And similarly, if it's a transfer bid, the double of a transfer bid does not ask for that suit, one no trump, two diamonds, a transfer. Double doesn't ask for the suit to be led. If they're playing weak no trump, it shows a good hand. So after having given you this advice, and now you've discussed it with your regular partner, because if you haven't discussed it, your partner won't know what you're doing, now you can say double. So you're saying, I've got a good hand partner. You're not showing clubs. So now it goes two spades. So now partner's got seven high card points, but has got no five card suit. And it's a difficult bid. Does partner bid three hearts? Does partner not bid three hearts? If you've got a good hand, you've got, say, 14, 15 high card points. She's got six. You still only have roughly 50, 50 in the points. North bid two clubs. North might have hearts. It's very dangerous to come into the bidding. So probably the action is pass. So now it comes back to the 19 point hand. Well, I'm not going to let them just play in two spades. I don't think. I'll take a chance. I'll gamble and I'll double again. So now it goes pass. So now, now that we know the partner has got a decent hand, you have to make a call. Doesn't look as if you can defend two spades double. Do you bid three hearts or do you bid four hearts? You see the big problem you've given by playing weak no trump. We now see the great big problem that we've given east west. Now we can all see, looking at both hands, that the winning bid here is four hearts. But have, has West got enough for four hearts? 
Does partner necessarily have to have four hearts? Maybe partner's just got three hearts, a good hand. So we don't know. Wes doesn't know really what to call. So let's just say Wes bids three hearts. So now you're back to east. Should you bid four hearts or not? You've got 19 points. Your partner now doesn't have to have any points. So what should you do? Should you pass three hearts? Should you bid four hearts? You don't know for sure what to do. And that's what the, the weak no trump has given you the problem. So you probably, most of you would, what would you do? You might just close your eyes and say, well, I'll take a chance. I can't go too many down. What? I'll take a chance because I don't like to be fooled by the weak no trump. So you bid, at least you've got a system. So you bid four hearts. So we managed to get into four hearts. And we can see that in four hearts, with the spade queen being right, and there, there's only two club losers and a spade loser, and you make four hearts. So we see that we can make four hearts. But you see, the whole point of this was to show you the difficulty to get to four hearts. What would have happened? If, 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 let's just imagine we weren't playing weak no trump. The bidding go one club, pass, pass, double, pass, one heart, pass. Now either three hearts or four hearts from the West East stand, but even if East bids just three hearts, West got enough to kick that into game with nice four card art suit. So this is a great hand. This is a great hand for the topic. We're seeing how difficult it is for East and West to reach their optimum game contract after a one no trump opener. And we're seeing how North, how Maggie took it out one no trump to two clubs because she knew the ax was going to fall. And she wasn't going to play one no trump double. She does, she's trying to protect her partner from going from a big hospital number. Right, so she took it out to two clubs. So so we can uh, here's I can take questions on moving one no trump out before the, the double comes, or I can take questions on how to defend against the one no trump in, in, the, in this situation when your system is actually changed from the one that you normally do against the strong no trump. So the important thing is that you and your partner need to have a defense against the weak no trump. Otherwise, nobody knows what the other person has. One no trump past two clubs double, what does that mean? One no trump past two diamonds double, what does that mean? Agnes Lee would like to raise, ask a question. Well, unmute yourself, Agnes, and ask a question. Yes, what does that no two club mean to the two to the weak no trump. North two clubs. North realized that if she said pass, the bidding was going to go one no trump, pass, pass, double. Now, if we look at the hand, she doesn't want to play in one no trump doubles. Because one no trump doubles is going to be a, a big number. 
going on the opposition score sheet. So North is making a preemptive run out. She says, trouble is on the horizon. She's taking out her umbrella. She sees it's going to pour. So before it pours, she's taking a chance and she's taking her umbrella. I hope this umbrella is going to work and stop me from getting soaked. So this like garbage statement. It's it's just Stamen. One no Trump, two clubs, it's Stamen. But her intention is to drop any response that I make, she's going to pass. So shouldn't East ask North what that means? And then East has more information. What would North say if East asked what what the two clubs meant. It means it's stamen. Yeah, would would North just say stamen? Yes. With no point count. She, does, she doesn't have, yeah. That, that's another thing, but even if you play strong no trump, if you play stamen, you don't have to have any points. If Van Rook was one no trump and you bid two clubs, you have to, you could have zero points a bid two clubs, even with the strong no trump. You don't have to alert, I mean, you alert, two clubs of statement. If you alert two clubs of statement, you don't have to say, I could have zero points. It's just asking for a major. As part of defense uh, also with vulnerability and strength of holding, would uh, two no Trump be uh, showing both minors and bidding a minor at the three level? Uh, show a strong um, single suited minor suit? I like to play if you bid two no trump over either in this situation one no trump, two clubs, two no trump, one no trump, or you could make an immediate two no trump. It shows a strong two suited hand. I like to use two no trump as a strong two suited hand. And if you do, if you do jump to three of a minor, it should be a good hand with that minor. Six card minor with a good hand. So one no trump and an immediate two no trump, I've got two good suits and a strong hand, at least five five. So, Barnard, in what situation you should uh, bid uh, one note from week? All the time, if you have an agreement with your partner? Sorry, what was the question? The question is when and how you should bid one note from week, so long as you have an agreement with your partner with 13, 14, 15, 14 points, you can bid one note from. That's what you're suggesting. Yeah, I'm suggesting yeah, when you've got 12 to 14 and a balanced hand, you're, or 11 to 14, you're opening one no trump. Yeah, that's what I thought. And it basically matches up the opponent by bidding one no trump, like you said in the first uh, deal. Barnett, this is Ed yeah. Gift calling. Uh, can you hear? Sorry. Yes. Can you hear? I can um, hear but if, if your card, if your card says that one no Trump is fifteen to seventeen, and a hand like this comes up, can you uh, bid it as one no Trump and then just uh, exp uh, explain that it's twelve to fourteen points or eleven to fourteen points? No, no, it's got to, it's got to be on your card. Oh, no, no, your card. You've got to have a card, and on the card that has to say 12, 14, or 11, 14. On so your you card, it has to. You can't change during a, an afternoon and play one no Trump strong and, and one no Trump weak by just announcing it during. Well, 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 some, oh, well, 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 you need to have more than one card, but some people have on their card, some people like to play one no Trump 15, 17 when they're vulnerable and 12, 14 when they're not vulnerable. It's okay to do that and write it on your card. Every time we're vulnerable, it's 15, 17. 
And every time we're not vulnerable, it's 12, 14. Okay, thank you. Right, but 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 if you need, so, if you, you, you can't just change from one hand to the next. So, Bernard, Stamen continues to be on. What about transfers? Yes, well, yes, Stamen and Trump, you just play your normal system over one no Trump, the same system. So you play transfers and nothing else changes? Nothing else changes, except only the values. Only the values. We'll go on to another, we're going, we're going to go on to another hand. We've got a few more hands to do and I can take, I can take a pile of questions at the end. Let's go, let's try and see if we can get the end to the end here. Okay, so this is a, probably an answer to your question. It goes, So there's a transfer bid, two arts transfer. So there's nothing at this point. The East can bid. East wants to know where this is going. <coughs> so now East has a problem. He's got a decent, he's got a nice, or decent 13 count. He's heard it go one no Trump, two hearts, two spades, but he's got support for the other, the other three suits. So now he should make a takeout double. So that's double for takeout. Now, <clears throat> now West has a good hand. <clears throat> His value, his partner must have something, and he's got uh, an opening bid. So West says, well, four hearts must have a play, so he bids four hearts. So Barnett of East is doubling uh, and after the two spades, why doesn't, if two hearts is a transfer, he's got the same hand, it's, uh, why doesn't he double layer for takeout? Well, first, he's not, he's a bit, he hasn't really got much support for spades, and he only has 13 high card points. He's not, he's, He's got a medium hand. If, if the opponents are going to be bidding, if you if you can just imagine, <clears throat> yeah, I see now he, he, because the the North, North, I see now North passes, so he knows it's weak and he can come in at that point. Okay, thank you. Yeah, if you can imagine that North was going to make a bid. Yeah. Now he would be he would be going for a big number if North was going to bid over two spades, and East came into the bidding over two hearts. East would be going for a big number. It's only when he's given safe he's given a bit of safety two spades pass pass. Now he knows the opponents are limited. Now he can come into the auction. Can everybody understand how East? Yeah. Why East decides only to enter the auction after it goes two hearts past two spades past pass. It doesn't enter the auction there. And this is a nuance. These are the nuances in understanding the weak no trump and how to play against it. And that's another reason why sometimes people go for penalties playing against the weak no trump because of two worried about being missing something and 
So they come in and they bid when they shouldn't. So Barnett, if, if your first, your double is takeout there, but but when do you have a penalty double and uh, to punish these people when when their weak no is is? Well, I, I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Uh, we've got more. more let couple more hands to do and then I can just take general questions. Okay. So here's an, here's an example. <clears throat> what I'm suggesting is that with all your balanced hands, you open up one no trump. With all your balanced hands, you open one no trump. So this is balanced, five, four, two, two. If you had five card major suit and a four card suit, you wouldn't open one no trump, you'd open one of a major. But here, you'll see, you don't really, if you open one club and you're part of it something, you don't have a good rebid. To, you usually have a six card minor to rebid the minor. So you would open one no trump. Open one no trump with all balanced hands, even including a five card major without a four card suit. So here we open one no trump. And now we've discussed with our partner our defense of two clubs is for the majors. So this is perfect hand for two clubs for the majors. So if partner's got the majors, he doesn't have to have a great hand. He may have only like nine high card points, but he may have a better hand. So you're good enough to invite game, but good enough, not good enough to play game. So you invite. You bid three spades, invitational. Better than two, not as good as four and partner can accept the invitation with this quite nice 13 points. The cards are all marked in the south hand, so there's only two clubs to lose, and the queen of hearts and the queen of spades are in the expected place, and you make five. So here's the this is also, so we're showing you the defense. I'll go back over the defense. One no trump, two clubs for majors. So over two clubs for majors. A jump to three is invitational. Two diamonds, ask partner for the longer major. In this case, if, part, if it had gone one no trump, two clubs, two diamonds, you would bid two spades because you had five spades and four hearts. Two diamonds over call would show one major, and two of a major would show that major with a, at least a four card minor. Any questions on this hand? After two diamonds uh, saying I have a, a major, what what is the response? You bid two hearts and correct the spades or how do you where do you go well yeah well two hearts would just be pass if you've got hearts and two spades would mean i i, I can afford i've got at least good enough to play in at least three hearts so you could even bid four hearts over two spades because partner's really shown that he's got something he's got a, a little fit for hearts but he's not interested when he bids two spades over two diamonds, he has a fit for hearts, but he's not interested if you've got spades. If he was interested in both suits, then he could bid two no trump, which would be like, I've got values here and I'm interested. Tell me more about your hand. I've got so value. So over two diamonds, you, you bid, if you've got a major, you bid the other major. Sort of well, like... 
Yeah, sort of. Yeah, if you if you, if you've got a major, you bid the other major. If you've got, and if you don't have a major, you just bid two hearts. Yeah. Okay. Is this Mohan? Sorry. Is this called Mohan? No, no, I, I, I'm not good with names. I only know. <laughs> I don't do names. I just do systems. Okay. Yeah, I think this might be right. Here is next hand. One no trump, and now we're showing. Yeah, ask about the example. Here's a penalty double. One no trump. This is a perfect penalty double. I'm hoping it's going to go one no trump doubled. I've got a good hand. I've got a great lead. Let's play one no trump double. And now we're going to show the escape mechanism. For those of you who want to be daring and try the system, here's the escape mechanism that I haven't discussed. Redouble would mean that you've got a five card suit and partner would bid two clubs and you would now show your five card suit. But here you bid two clubs, which means you've got two four card suits and your lowest four card suit is clubs. So you would bid two clubs to stay clubs in a higher. So now it goes double the next hand. I want to play two clubs double. I've got some points. So the one no trumper doesn't want to play two clubs double. So he bids two diamonds. <clears throat> that means if your other suits diamonds, we will just have to play two diamonds. And it goes double. So now it, it goes two hearts. There Maggie bids her second suit, two hearts. So now it goes to pass. Pass. So now West doesn't really want to play two hearts doubled. So probably West will bid. Not quite enough for, could maybe bid two no trump, it's quite possible. Or he might bid three diamonds. Goes past. Now he's got a good hand, his partner's shown a good 14 or more high card points and with diamonds, he's got the ace of diamonds, that's going to be five or six tricks. All he wants is a heart stopper for three no trump. So he bids three hearts, asking for a heart stopper. So now We double three hearts, tell partner we want a heart lead. And West got a heart stopper. Bits three, no trump. And we can see that even on a heart lead, a heart lead to knock out the ace of hearts, the clearer, because the hearts are 4-4, four, four, the clearer is going to make five diamond winners, two club winners of seven, one heart and one spade. And the defense can only take three heart tricks and the ace of spades. So here's a good example of the run out system. 
How you rescue one no, one no trump doubled, and I'll say it again. Three double shows a five card suit. Bid show that suit and a higher. So if the clubs had been diamonds, we would have said two diamonds. If you have four hearts and four spades, you'd say four, two hearts. So that and so that's the way that North South get to play in their best fit. Did anybody like to ask any questions about this hand? So after you're doubled, if you play with no trump, you need a system of runouts. So could, so could you run? System. Could you run through them again? Two clubs is, is one no trump clubs double, and a higher. One no trump double redouble forces partner to bid two clubs. And now you you pass with clubs or bid a five card suit. Two clubs would show clubs and a higher. Two diamonds would show diamonds and a higher. Two arts, two arts and a higher. Okay. And I'll just bring you to the last deal. No. <clears throat> this is a, the last deal we have. It's going to go. Now, you see, North doesn't have enough points to bid. Ten points is no, no, you just automatically pass with ten points or bad elevens with the weak no trump. So now we're back at the bridge, local bridge club. What what is East going to do? One no trump pass pass. I've played against that weak no trump. Or or we don't have we haven't played against the weak no trump. I must want to enter the bidding surely. So he bids. So now it goes two spades pass pass the north. Now, North says, oh, it's gone, partner must have, it. I've got support for the other suits. I don't mind what partner does over two spades double. If he bids clubs, diamonds, or hearts, I'm very happy. So it goes past, well, I've got spades. I've got a hand that might work for defense. So I'm just going to pass two spades double. So we can see that there's two heart losers, there's two club losers, there's four, there's a rough, there's five, and that at least there's a diamond, that's six, and there's at least a spade, that's seven. So we can see that there's going to be a penalty of 300 points coming north south way, which is going to be a top board because nobody else is going to be playing in two spades double. So you get a hundred percent for playing two spades double down two. So here's another example of people coming in over, and, I, and, I, and I'm not saying two spades is a bad bid because the cards might have been differently. I'm not saying two spades is a bad bid. Probably would bid it myself when no trump pack, but it shows what this shows is how the weak no trump can score and punish the opponent to come into the bidding. Would anybody like to? Uh, uh, we're now coming towards the end of the of the of the hour, but here's what I'll do. I'll anybody who want to ask a question about this hand or any general questions before we finish.
just wanted to say thank you. This was great. I'm glad you enjoyed it. What, what this, I hope this has opened everybody's eyes up. I'm not saying you should all rush to play weak no Trump, but what I am saying is maybe you should try it sometime, and, and if you like it, you could play it. If you don't like it, go back to strong no Trump. What we're saying is you play more hands, and it's probably more exciting for your bridge line. And certainly, if you don't play it, it's good to know how to defend against it so you understand it. So the, the range you recommend is 11 to 14? 11 to 14, yes. I'd be a bit careful opening 11s if you're vulnerable, but it should be 11 to 14. So, Barnett, I have a question. Um, if you're playing 11 to 14, yes. I think you said that um, bad 11 by respond responder should not bid with a bad 11. Right. Can you tell that? A bad 11. A bad 11 would be like a 4-3-Z hand with jacks. Right. Is a bad 11. So these are bad 11. If you've got a bad 11, or even sometimes a medium 11, you might, if you're playing match point pairs, the objects to get a plus score. And it doesn't matter if you miss an occasional game. If you're playing an imps game, all you have to do, if it's vulnerable, is make one game out of three to make even. If you're playing an imps game, a teams game, you have to get, make one game out of three and even go down to two games, you're, you're breaking even. But if you're playing in a pairs game, the object's to get a plus score. So when you're playing pairs, you should probably err on the conservative side, responding to no Trump. And if you're playing teams, you should err on the aggressive side. Thank you. That's huge. Barnett, what do you open yes. a non-no Trump hand with? How many points? Do you open 11s? I open, I like to bet, I, 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 I open almost all 11s and, and if I've got a five card suit, I might open 10s, uh, depends, I mean the opponents are vulnerable, I like to bid before they do, I look at the vulnerability in the board, and if I'm not vulnerable, I like to bid before the opponents, but, so sometimes I might open 10s, I might open 9s, <laughs> all depends. But Thank vulnerable, you. Usually, usually I have a little. Um, and if you have a strong hand, remember that the rebid of your hand would be one no trump. If it goes a club or diamond and you bid a no trump now, you're showing 15 to 17. That's the difference from opening a weak no trump as to opening a strong no trump. And that's where you come into having a good system over a rebid of one no trump. One club, one something, one no trump. Most people play, a, good players play two way new minor forcing after a, after a strong no trump. And if you haven't learned that system, then that's a good system for you to learn in the future. So I have another question, Barnett. Yes. Uh, you open a club and I'm your partner and I respond one heart and you have the big no trump hand. How do you, how do you show that? Do you bid two hearts? Uh, well, I, one no trump 15, 17. Two no trump is a good 18 to 20. I, 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 generally speaking. No, no, no but, you, but you have a fit with my hearts. So oh, I have a fit with your hearts, okay. Yeah, one diamond, one <coughs> hearts one time and one heart if i've got if i bid three hearts i'm showing uh, the values of 15 to 18 and four hearts would be like a good 18 to 19. okay and then of course i've got splinters available right thank you and the other thing I, is that generally speaking my, my style is to bid no trump one club one something one no trump one club something, one something, two no trump. 
if I'm if generally speaking, if I'm just at four four, my style's not to bid the other major, but to bid no trump. That's a more of a, then you could always ask. It's more of a team style. I like partner to know how many points I have in the first instance. But that's my style, and 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 not everybody plays that. Some some experts play a lot of experts play that way, and a lot some experts play the different way. So you have to choose what you like. My style is a club of heart, and I bid a no trump with four spades, and then partner can ask me if I have four spades. Um, somebody has asked if you could repeat partner responses to a weak no trump. So partner I, responses to a weak no trump is it is the yeah. same as the same as a response is a strong no trump, except that you have to judge the point count is different. You don't invite unless you've got a decent eleven. You don't invite mm -hmm. six. You don't invite six unless you've got a decent eighteen. It's the same. It's the same statement and four way transfers. Just that you need more points. Stamen transfers Texas. Explain them all the same. Uh, but you said. But you said uh, to we have new week no Trump partner says uh, two clubs it means clubs in the higher one. That's no, that's after it's doubled one new Trump double when they make a penalty ah. double. And the other thing yeah the other thing I didn't say is if they if they say double and it's not for penalties you should just play your system on. Just play you your not. So the you have to ask the opponents what the double means. Sometimes they, they won't even have discussed it. They might not even know what the double means, but they'll just play the double as if it was over a strong no trump. They might not have changed the system. But if one no trump, if double is for penalties, then you just play that, that system I, of run outs I gave you. But if double is for takeout, now redouble shows a good hand and means you want to penalize the opponents. And and apart, if you don't redouble, you just play your normal system, statement and transfer. Okay. Thank you. May, may I ask you something? I mean, when you first learned playing bridge, did you learn this system because it's the British system? Yes. When I first learned, actually, my very first system was weak and strong. Hello. Weak and strong. 12, 14, 15, 17. Yes. I played weak, no trump when not vulnerable. Strong, no trump when I was vulnerable. Right. Okay. Okay. Fine. And I, I put that on my card. It's on your card. How many points not vulnerable? 12, 14. How many points vulnerable? 15, 17. And then, uh, so that. He's a bit scared. So, so then. And then. The, <laughs> Then there's another one. It's, there's a good friend of mine called Zia Mahmood. You, you might have heard of him. Zia Mahmood is a very famous bridge player. He lived in America and now he lives in London. He made his living in his early stages playing rubber bridge for money. So he played rubber bridge for money. That's how he made his living. And he went to the bridge club and he had his system. And his system was weak, no trump. In first position, weak no trump in second position, and strong no trump in third position, and weak no trump in fourth position. So regardless of the vulnerability, it's always weak first, second, and fourth, and strong and third. Reason, I, I, I don't know. You do know. Quite an obvious reason, in fact. Really? The obvious reason is he didn't want to open third in hand and be double for penalties. Oh, because because when the first and second hand have passed, then he's going to make a if he he's taking a risky bid. He was a professional rubber bridge player. He didn't want to open third in hand and with a weak no trump. So he opened strong no trump and weak no trump and all the other positions. And that was called the workers no trump. <laughs> so workers no trump was applied to Zia Mahmood and applied to Zia Mahmood and it's Weak no trump, first, second, and fourth in hand, and strong no trump in third position. That's a worker's no trump. 
for a new player, how many of these bids are you, I know you're saying things are on the card, but how many of these transitions have to be alerted by you? Well, your... uh, uh, every, every bid that isn't an actual bid has to be alerted. And usually, well, if, if I'm playing in a tournament in uh, online at the moment, if I'm even if I'm playing 15, 17, I alert my I alert one no Trump and I write in 15, 17, I send it to the opponent. So uh, every single bid that, that is not a natural bid has to be alert. Because so many people play different things. You might think one no Trump, two cobs is stamen, but in Europe it might not be stamen. And uh, one no Trump, two diamonds is a transfer. But somebody might be playing it as a force forcing statement. So there's so many different, it, you're always best to err on the cautious side and, 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 and uh, alert all your bids that are not natural. Well, then you get to the end of the game and you've missed the meaning of like at least three bids. And now you don't even remember how to figure out what it was that you missed. And you can't even complain but, to the director because half the time, at least people don't. If, if it's online, you see, all the bids that alerted, you can always go back and look yeah. at them because it's all there's a written record of every bid that's made. Yeah. And, and, and when it comes to your lead, and you can ask for a review of the bidding and the meaning of all the bids. If you're leading against a contract, then you can always ask for a review and the meaning of each bid. Oh. Before you leave. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yes, so Barnett, if you have 10 points or less as responder, do you pass after your opener makes a, a week one on Trump bid? Generally yes. speaking, unless you, unless you want to transfer to five card suit, you would transfer your normally to five card suit major. If you're playing a five card minor, you wouldn't transfer to your minor because you take your chances in playing one no trump, get a better score. Playing match point pairs. Thank you. I'm going to chip in here and say, first of all, what a pleasure it is to listen to an expert who understands the logic and rationale for every one of the bids that they have used today. Um, it's much easier to, to learn a bidding system if you understand what it's all about. And I think Barnett has really explained that very clearly today. And even though I play no Trump, weak no Trumps, I picked up a number of pointers today. And I'm sure that everybody who attended did the same. So Barnett and Maggie, I really want to say thank you very much to you both for being here. And um, I just want to let people know that Barnett's been talking, he's had you know, 11 or 12 hands that he's gone through today. It's not just the time that he's here, it's all the preparation time in bringing these hands together and uh, so that he can give this wonderful demonstration. So thank you both very much indeed, and we will surely miss you. And, thank you. Uh, Thanks a lot, Rosemary. Thank you. For, I'd like to thank you, Rosemary. I'd like to thank you very much for the invitation to do this and uh, and I've been, uh, we've enjoyed doing this very much and, and hope, hopefully everyone's enjoyed it and hopefully we'll still be able to do some more with you and members of Fort Lauderdale Bridge Club in, in, the, in the future. Maybe in the winter, we can be in 